Hello, today we're going to continue talking about lipids. So we're going to start by reviewing the fats, which we learned about on Tuesday. So take a minute and review the structure of the three types of fats listed up here. Saturated, unsaturated, cis fats, and unsaturated trans fats. See if you can remember without looking them up. Take your best guess. Go back and look them up if you're in your notes if you need to. We're going to look at a couple examples. Um, and see if you can tell these apart and kind of remember what the differences are. Hang on just a second while I move the camera and we'll look at some models here. All right, so here's the first example. Um, this is a fatty acid, um, not the entire triglyceride molecule, but just one of the fatty acid tails. Um, you can see this end of the molecule over here has the carboxyl group. It's got a carbon double bonded to an oxygen connected to a hydroxide over here. And then you have the carbon chain going down the middle with a bunch of hydrogens attached around the outside. So what kind of fat is this? Now I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to take off a couple of these hydrogens. And I'm going to change the bonds here in the middle. Oh, my molecule's falling apart. Yeah. Complete and utter collapse. Okay. All right, this is the same atoms, but I've changed the configuration a little bit. What kind of fat molecule is this? Hopefully you noticed that in this case, our double bond is right here. So if you imagine that plane going through here, um, the hydrogens are on the same side of the double bond and the rest, those carbon chains of the molecule are hanging off the same side. So this is the cis configuration of an unsaturated fatty acid. Now that I have a double bond in there, this contains less hydrogen than it previously did. One more example to look at real quick.
Okay, look at this one closely. There's just a small difference, but an important one. This one is a trans fat. So now you can see the plane of the double bond goes through this way. And one of the little hydrogens goes up, the other goes down. And in this case, the carbon chain comes down off this carbon and goes up off of here. So this is the trans configuration. All I did is swap kind of these two atoms here, these two sections. This is a trans fat. So those are kind of the three main types of fats that we talked about yesterday, the unsaturated cis fatty acids, the unsaturated trans fatty acids, that's what this is, and the saturated fat. So today we're going to continue on and talk about two other groups of lipid molecules. One of them you've probably heard of. This is a phospholipid. Um, phospholipids are the type of lipids that make up the cell membrane. And so we'll talk about them more when we learn more about the cell membrane in the next unit. These are similar to fats, but they only have two fatty acid tails instead of three. The third um, hydroxide on that glycerol head instead is attached to a phosphate group. You can see that kind of highlighted in dark blue, that PO4 functional group. And a phosphate group has a negative charge. There can be other little molecules linked onto that phosphate group, but the important thing about that is that even though these tails are still hydrophobic, they're still almost completely carbon hydrogen, so they're nonpolar and hydrophobic, um, the phosphate group causes the head, that glycerol head, to be hydrophilic. Because of that negatively charged phosphate group, it is attracted to the positive side of water molecules. So it's hydrophilic. And because of that, these lipids arrange themselves into a bilayer. You've seen this before with the cell membrane, with the heads pointing out and the hydrophobic tails hiding in the middle. So that unique chemistry of a phospholipid helps to um, organize cell membranes and um, allow them to kind of act as that barrier between the inside and the outside of our cells. The third type of lipids that we're gonna talk about are the steroids. These have a lot of different functions. You might recognize a couple of these. There's a vitamin, there's cholesterol, there's testosterone, some um, hormones are steroid lipid molecules. You'll notice all of these have one part of their structure in common. They have kind of this skeleton of four fused carbon rings. In vitamin D, one of those rings is slightly broken and made into a double bond, but they all have that same kind of basic structure in the middle. That's how you can recognize, recognize a steroid. Um, the different types of steroids are distinguished by the chemical groups that are attached to that backbone, to that skeleton. So you can see there are different functional groups in different arrangements hanging off of those four fused carbon rings. Cholesterol is an animal steroid that you've probably heard of. Um, that's part of all cell membranes. So in the next unit, when we talk about the cell membrane, we will come back to the role of this one. So again, it's a lipid. Lipids make up cell membranes. Um, but cholesterol is one of those in addition to phospholipids. This is also kind of the first steroid that's made in a lot of chemical processes. And then it gets modified by adding and removing those functional groups to turn into some of these other um, steroid molecules that living things need. So cholesterol is a really common and really important one that we'll talk about more later. So at this point, we are going to take a quick break. And if you haven't already, go and finish your pattern matching activity. All you have left are the nucleic acids. This is how many of each type you should have. Um, and then come back, we'll talk real briefly about nucleic acids. 
So in this unit, we're only going to touch on this group of biomolecules very briefly because we will come back and spend a lot more time with DNA and RNA as we talk about things like protein synthesis and genetics and all of that stuff. So we will come back to these in much more detail. We're just gonna go over the basics here. As you know, nucle nucleic acids store and transmit and help to express hereditary information. So they hold your genes and they hold the instructions. Nucleic acids are polymers that are made of monomers that are called nucleotides. And what you see on the right here is one complete nucleotide. Nucleotides have three parts to them. One part is the nitrogenous base. And the nitrogenous base in this one is kind of this section up here. Um, you can see this one has two fused rings that contain nitrogen. Um, some of them only have a single ring and those different groups have different names. We'll learn more about that later. That nitrogenous base is then attached to a five carbon sugar. So this section of the molecule should look a lot like the monosaccharides we learned about a couple days ago, um, because that's what it is. It's a sugar made of completely carbon, hydrogen, oxygen with this ring structure and hydroxide groups attached to it. Oops, sorry. Um, and then that's attached to one or more phosphate groups. And again, that's your phosphate functional group. So a nitrogenous or a nucleotide has a base, a sugar, and a phosphate that are all connected. These nucleotides are then linked together in big long chains that can then spiral up into a single helix or a double helix depending on the type of molecule you're talking about. The other details in this part of chapter three we will cover more, like I said, when we come back to nucleic acids in the future. This is all you need to know for now are those basic monomers and the basic chemical structures that make up nucleic acids. So that's it for the large groups of biomolecules. We have one final topic to wrap up unit three that we'll talk about tomorrow. Um, and there are two things that need to be completed for tomorrow. Um, first of all, I assigned a reading um, that's kind of a cartoony representation of the earliest moments of how life began on the planet Earth. So please read that before tomorrow's class um, because you need some of that information for the activities we're going to do in class. You also have your enzyme lab that is due tomorrow. So email me if you have any questions and have a great rest of your day.